that's right. And where we proclaim your name, yeah. Let's declare that this is a house of healing. And our hearts, and our hearts are full of faith, Jesus. You have our full attention, yeah. And you have the final say. So we say, come alive. We say, come alive in the name of Jesus. Come alive.
to the feet of everything in the name of Jesus. We believe that this is a house of me. liberty. I said where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Yeah. And there is a miracle in this house today. And we're awakening not only our worship unto the Lord, but we are awakening God's moving on this city and in our hearts and in our families. So let's sing this together. There is a sound I love to hear. It's the sound of the Savior's robe as he walks into the room where people pray, where we hear praises. He hears faith. Come on, lift your praise. Hallelujah. Oh, we worship you, God. There the sound I love to hear. It's the sound of the Savior's robe as he walks into the room where people pray, where he hears worship, he hears faith. God, we worship, we give you glory. aloud sing his praise aloud that's it let the church sing awake my soul and sing say sing his praise aloud
in when we pray yes. We've stood a wall Now stands away Where every promise Is amen Yes and amen And when he moves And when he moves Come on Make no mistake The bowels of hell Begin to shake All hail the Lord All hail the King Sing all hail the Lord yeah. All hail the Lord All hail the King All hail the Lord yeah. All hail the Lord All hail the King yeah. Amen, amen Psalm 24, God claims the world as his. Everything and everyone belongs to him. He's the one who pushes back oceans to let the dry ground appear, planting firm foundations for the earth. So who then ascends into the presence? And who has the privilege of entering God's holy place? Those who are clean, whose works and ways are pure, whose hearts are true and sealed by the truth. Those who never deceive, whose words are sure, they will receive the Lord's blessing and righteousness given by the Savior God. They will stand before Him, for they seek the pleasure of God's face. They seek the pleasure of communion with God. So wake up, wake up, you living gateways. Lift up your heads, you ageless doors. Welcome the King of glory, for he is about to come through. I'm prophesying that in this place, he is about to come through. We are about to see a move of God, amen? Welcome the King of glory. And who is this King of glory? The Lord armed and ready for battle. The mighty one, invincible in every way. So wake up, living gateways, and rejoice. Fling wide, you ageless doors. Here he comes. The king of glory is ready to come in. And you ask, who is this king of glory? He is the Lord of victory, armed and ready for battle. The mighty one, the invincible commander of heaven's host. He is the king of glory. Amen. And we as the church, we have this incredible opportunity since we through the blood of Christ have been given access into the holy place. Who can ascend the hill of the Lord? We can. We can stand in the holy place and we can be like David. We can dance, we can shout, we can celebrate and welcome the King of glory in. And as ambassadors of the kingdom of earth, we have been given authority over this earth. And so we're gonna prophesy in this place. We're not just gonna sing songs because lyrics up on the screen. We're gonna prophesy. We're gonna use our mouth. We're gonna use the weapon of worship and we're gonna welcome the King of glory, not just into this place, but what we do in this room echoes outside of these doors over the city of Houston, over the state of Texas, over the nation of America, over the world. Welcome the King of glory in, amen. Amen.
the Spirit of the Lord is I have to worship. My heart has to sing praises. So God, would you accept this offering of praise and worship? Lord, and we know that we can receive, Lord, what you have for us. In Acts chapter one, verse eight, the Lord says that you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you and you shall be witnesses. Shall is not a conditional word. It's an unconditional word. So we're gonna do some work with our praise right now. And we're gonna declare that the name of the Lord is above every name. That the name of the Lord is above every name. It has power to heal, save, set free, deliver, reclaim. I proclaim healing in this place. And I proclaim healing in the name of Jesus over your family, over your children, over your neighbors, in the name of Jesus. So let's do some work right now with our worship and proclaim that name.
I just want to speak the name of Jesus over every person in this place cause I know there is peace within your presence I speak Jesus show you something the Lord showed me in Acts 16. So you may be familiar with the story, but Paul and Silas, they're out. Um, they release a woman from a demonic presence and they get jailed for it. And they're sitting in jail. And uh, at about midnight, it says, they start singing praises unto the Lord. But I want you to see what the word says. It says, suddenly, as they started to sing, a great earthquake shook the foundations of the prison all at once, listen, every prison door flung open and the chains of all the prisoners came loose. Of all the prisoners, not just Paul and Silas, because the Lord is a liberating God. He sees the oppressed and he says, I'm not just gonna break their chains, I'm gonna break all the chains. And so I, I just, in faith that we know that this is possible, it's written in the word. That's what I love about the word. They can say we're crazy all we want, but I have the word. <laughs> And it says that as they praised, as they praised, wow. not only were they released, not only are the chains on you released, not only is the spirit of oppression and fear that's taking over the world released on you. In Jesus' name, it's released on all of us. It's released on the neighborhoods around this place. It's released on the city. Every prisoner the enemy thinks he has captive. When the people of God praise, when we lift up, and even more so, we have the power of the name of Jesus. And when we praise and we apply the name of Jesus, that name breaks every stronghold. That name heals every sickness. It mends every wound. And so before we move on in faith, I want us to sing that bridge again. And whether it's you in this place that needs a release from chains or strongholds or breaking, I wanna tell you Jesus is gonna do it because we're praising in this place. But if you've come to know freedom in Christ and you're just here praising the Lord, think of the folks around you, your next door neighbor, the person you drove by on the way here, the whole city of Houston, the whole state of Texas. There's so much more happening in the spirit realm than what we can see right here. This is just a little fire, but that goes out. So we're gonna sing that song again and I want you to prophesy with your mouth. I want you to sing these lyrics. Shout Jesus from the mountains. Jesus in the streets of Houston, Texas. Jesus in the darkness that's trying to invade, but it won't because the name of Jesus is greater. And we shout Jesus over our families, over our city. We're gonna speak that holy, mighty, beautiful, chain-breaking name of Jesus. Let's do it. Are you with us? Let's do it. Shout Jesus from the mountains, Jesus in the streets, Jesus in the darkness over
can communicate with you, Lord, we know that you will break every single chain because you went to a cross. You died, bled, so that that blood, the precious blood of Christ, could flow over every sin. But the story doesn't stop there. <laughs> My Bible says that they put him in the ground and took a large stone and rolled it over the grave and put guards at the door so that no one could steal the body and say that he had risen. But guess what? The stone was rolled away. <laughs> And so if there's a mountain in your life that you just feel it cannot be moved, guess what? God can move it. God can move it. I just want to sing this one chorus over the room. Mountains are still being moved. Strongholds are still being loosed. God, we believe it. And yes, we receive that wonders are still what you do and bodies are still being raised giants are still being slain god we believe it yes we can see it that wonders are still
This is a move. And even if it's just for one person in this room, it's worth it to stop and pause so that a miracle can happen. Do you believe that? Because you know, the angels in heaven rejoice when one soul is saved. And so if there's somebody in this room who needs a miracle, it's yours. It's yours today. This is a move of your spirit, God. This is a move. I believe it's yours. In the name of Jesus, receive it right now. Let it be so, God. That's it, that's it. Just let the glory of the Lord enter in. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit. I was a wretch. I remember who I was. I was lost. I was blind, I was running out of time. Sin separated, the breach was far too wide. But from the far side of the chasm, you held me in your sight. So you made a way across the great divide. Left behind heaven's throne to build it here inside. And there at the cross, you paid the debt I owe. Broke my chains, broke my chains, freed my soul. And for the first time, I had hope. Thank you, Jesus, for the
the doors fling wide. I see glory as I run inside the throne before you. I doors fling wide. I see glory as I run inside the throne before you. I bow, sing it one more time. And the veil is torn and the doors fling wide. I see glory as I run inside the throne before you I bow Holy, holy Holy Lord And God Almighty Over all It's who you are Cause you in Dallas and there was about maybe about 5,000 people in in the crowd and it wasn't like this I love this being in the round but it was like a stage and a whole audience of people and we were standing there and we were singing a song about the holiness of God and all of a sudden they had these lights that were like behind us and they would flash they were called flashers or blinders they would like flash and we could, from the platform, we could see the whole audience. And we could see like 5,000 people with their hands just lifted in the air, worshiping the King. And I was so taken because the Lord in that moment, I saw this vision and I saw the, the skies split open and I, and I saw him on his throne and he was watching his children worship. And he had this big smile on his face and he was just loving every minute of it. Just this praise is rising to the king. And, um, you know, there's kind of this sentiment in the church where we go, what would you do if the king walked in the room? We even wrote a song about it, and there's a worship team that wrote, what would you do if the king walked in the room? And to that, I reply, he is already here. So not what would you do, what will you do? The king is in the room when we worship. And that's why, that's why we wrote that last song and the veil is torn. The doors, they're flung wide. And it's not only that we have access, but we're invited in. We're invited in. And he says, come, come to me, you who are weary. Come to me, you who need rest. Come into my presence. I made a way. I did away with all the checklists of religion so that you would be able to just run, run in. And 
And I wanted to read to you out of John 4. Um, again, probably a story you've heard before, but it's the Samaritan woman at the well. And Jesus meets the Samaritan woman at the well and they go back and forth. They have this exchange and, and Jesus calls out her sin. And of course, like all of us, she changes the subject. <laughs> and so she brings up this, she, which, and this is a whole sermon in itself, but when you're confronted with your sin, you change the subject and the easiest thing to go to is like law and legalism and religion. And so that's exactly what she does. <laughs> She's like, um, so let's stop talking about that because I don't want to talk about that. How about we talk about you? And we say, you're a prophet, so tell me this. She says, why do our fathers worship God here on this nearby mountain, but your people teach that Jerusalem is the place where we must worship, which is right. And I love it because you could almost replace her question with any question that we face in the modern church. Well, should we meet or should we not meet? Do we put carpet in the sanctuary or do we put tile? Is it pews or is it chairs? <laughs> and Jesus is like, believe me, woman, the time has come when you won't worship the Father on the mountain or in Jerusalem, but in your heart. Your people don't really know the one they worship. We Jews worship out of our experience for it's from the Jews that salvation is made available. Listen, from here on, worshiping the Father will not be a manner of the right place, but with the right heart. For God is spirit and he longs to have sincere worshipers who worship and adore him in the realm of the spirit and in truth. And what's so beautiful about this is she brings up a really good point and it's kind of this theme throughout the whole scriptures from the beginning of time. We have this God who pursues and pursues and pursues. And then you have humanity who creates this riff. And because of his holiness, it's not that he doesn't wanna be with us. He's just simply so holy that he can't be in the presence of unholiness. And so this issue is caused. He so longs to pursue us, but in our fallen state, we just simply can't be in his presence. So from the beginning of time, he starts in, in stating these things. They're called tabernacles and temples and they're places where the Lord will meet with his people. But the only problem is it required a sacrifice. It required life for life and in order to do that, you had to go through all this ritualistic cleansing and sacrifices. And oh my goodness, if you've read Leviticus, you know what I'm talking about, right? I, I'm like, I'm trying to study it and I'm like, verse two and I'm confused. <laughs> it's like, well, which kind of sac... Honestly, I'm surprised that the priests didn't get just laid out more often because I don't think I could remember all of it. I'm like, do I use a bird or a goat or what do I use? But this is the thing that it's become this religious checklist. And in order to get to the Ruah of God, the personal presence that just was this fire in the Holy of Holies, you had to go through all this stuff. So God has this plan instead of having to continue to bring sacrifices and sacrifices and sacrifices and have gradients of holiness between humanity and God, he will just make himself the sacrifice. And he says, I, I leave my throne to come and walk among those who I created. And he was called Emmanuel, God with us. God came to be the sacrifice to return us to himself. And when he did that, it says he didn't abolish the law, he fulfilled it. And so we have this incredible access into the Holy of Holies now through Jesus. The word says that when his body was broken, it was like the veil being torn. And now we run. And what's so incredible and what I love about that story is she goes, well, where's the place? 
Do I need to go to a church? Where can I do this? I want to, if I worship, where can I do it? And in 1 Corinthians, it says that the tabernacle through Christ now resides in his people. He became the tabernacle and then broke the veil and now his spirit comes. And it's not just, it's the spirit that resided in the Holy of Holies, that Ruah of God, that personal presence. Oh my goodness. It's unbelievable. <laughs> it's unbelievable. And how foolish of us to sometimes take that for granted. We come and worship the Lord. And I'm not talking about just in church. I'm talking about whenever we worship the Lord. How many times have you just been like, oh, great are you, Lord. Oh my word, Aaron's rolling around in his grave. He's like, do you know what I had to do to get to where you are? <laughs> and so we have this incredible access. God is not just this big thing in the sky that we just like oh, sing praises to. Just come down, come down, come down. Get, 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 get. <laughs> he came down so that we don't have to do this anymore. We can just worship Him in spirit and in truth, in truth. The last thing, in order to get, and I know the law has been fulfilled, praise God, but we look at the tabernacle and the temple and we see this incredible foreshadow of Christ and our walk with Christ. And in the New Testament, in the New Covenant, it says that we are to come before Him bringing sacrifices of praise. And even more so that our life is to be a living sacrifice. Yeah? And so in order to be a living sacrifice, it means that some sacrifice is gonna have to happen. <laughs> And that's not always fun. It's super fun to praise the Lord, right? It's super fun to have a praise break. But then I'm like, repent. <laughs> and you're like. But to be a living sacrifice, a holy sacrifice, we're called to be a holy people, priests and kings knowing how to steward the presence like priests, ruling and reigning as co-heirs with Christ as kings. Priests and kings of what? Of a holy nation? Well, so we offer ourselves as sacrifices to be made holy before the Lord. And it's not a religious thing. It's a heart thing. It's a surrender. In worship, it's a, I lay my will, my plans, my fears, all of it as a living sacrifice. I offer me, God, as a living sacrifice, as a living sacrifice. You call me holy, righteous, and blameless, but I offer myself as a living sacrifice. And so in this next song, I just wanna encourage you. We've been having a time with the Lord, I love that. But I never wanna walk out of these moments with God and not fully go all the way in. And to fully go all the way in, it takes repentance. It takes sacrifice. It takes surrender. And I know we've been walking through what a ridiculous time. <laughs> and I'm just constantly reminded that his ways are higher, so much higher than mine. 
And so I have to constantly lay my fear on the altar. I have to say, God, I, I don't get it, but I get you and I know you're gonna be good. So here I am. And I don't know what it is. I don't know what you walked in here with. Maybe it's something else that you need to bring before the Lord, but I encourage you. We're not just singing songs in this place. We're encountering the God of all history. And he's right here. He's here in this place with us. And he says, present yourself as a living sacrifice. And so I just encourage you right now, whatever it may be, whatever the Lord brings to your heart, to lay on the altar right now, to offer it up as a sacrifice unto the Lord, to offer it as a sacrifice of praise, a sacrifice of surrender. We're gonna bring it before him in this song. And we're just gonna declare that God, more than anything, we want you. And so here I am, I'm offering it all. I bring my fears, my worries, my pride, my hurts, my healings, my hangups. I bring it all before you. So let's just spend some time with the Lord. Let's just sing to him, let's declare, we want nothing else, God, but you. And we just surrender ourselves before you.
In Him we have our move, we move and have our being. Jesus. Never gonna let me down. You're never gonna let, you're never gonna let me down. 